and gentlemen, the ninth annual convocation of the Institute is about to commence. The academic procession is now entering the hall. Uh, you requested to stand up and remain standing till all the members of the procession are seated on the dais. Uh, welcome to the ninth annual convocation of the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Pune. We are very honored to have with us as chief guest, Professor Padmanabhan Balram from the National Center for Biological Sciences in Bengaluru and former director, Indian Institute of Science. Uh, we extend a very warm welcome to you. We welcome the dignitaries on the dais. Um, they are the chairperson, board of governors, Aisa Pune, Mr. Sudhir Mehta, who is also chairperson of Torrent Private Limited. Professor Jayant Udgaonkar, Director, Aisar Pune, and Chairperson of the Senate. Colonel Raj Shekhar, Registrar, Aisar Pune. And Professor Girish Ratnaparki, Dean Academics. We also welcome other members of the Senate who are seated in the first row. These are senior faculty members, deans, and chairs of the departments at Aisar Pune. A quick reminder again to keep your cell phones off or in silent mode. Um, I now request the Chair, Board of Governors, Mr. Mehta, to declare the convocation open. I declare the ninth annual convocation of ICER Pune open. Thank you, sir. Uh, I now request Professor Girish Ratnaparki, Dean Academics, to present the candidates for the doctoral degrees. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to all the parents to the ninth uh, ISA convocation. Uh, it's my pleasure to present to all of you 32 students, including those in absentia, who have completed the prescribed program of study and research and have qualified for the award of Doctor of Philosophy. Of these 32, 10 have also qualified previously for the Master of Science degree at, as part of the integrated PhD program. I request the Chairperson Senate, Professor Jayant Udgaukar, and the Registrar Colonel Raj Shekhar to come forward to award the degrees.
I will now uh, read out the names of the students uh, who have got either a, a PhD or a PhD with a master's. Uh, Devika Sudhir Bodhas in absentia, PhD. Uh, all the names I'm going to uh, read out are all uh, PhD awards. Shoptik Chakravarti, could you please come on the dais? <laughs> Vivek Kumar. Vivek Kumar, in absentia. Tariq Ahmed Sheikh. Basudev Patanayak, in absentia. Gautam Sharma. Abhijit K. Sudipa Mondal in absentia, Prerna Bora in absentia, Prachi Gupta in absentia, Saurabh Laha, Ashok Kumar B, Todkari Irana Anappa, Prasun Raj Chaudhary, Vargude Prakash Kashinath, Rintu Umesh in absentia, Devashish Mondal, Pooja Kumari, Silveshwari S, Ajit Vijay, Dheeraj Chandra Joshi, I now move on to the integrated PhD students. Uh, Ryan Chakravarti in absentia. Swati Deswal in absentia. Abhijit Gupta. Dev Prasanna Kar. These are all distinction candidates. Divya Rao, distinction in absentia. Vikhat Ahalwat in absentia. Naveen Nishad. Shubham Pandey in absentia. Harpreet Singh Kalsi in absentia. Angira Rastogi in absentia. Uh, Gaurav Beniwal in absentia. I'll come to you. Can you just sit down? Sunita will move on to her. Uh, request Professor Girish Ratnapati, Dean Academics, to present the candidates for the BS and MS degrees. I will now read out the names of candidates who have got a BS MS degree with distinction. Pritam uh, Sinha Roy Choudhury in absentia. Sarat Chandra J. Sabrinath JP, (Applause) 
चेतन पांडे यशी जैन ऋतिक कुमार घोष अभिनव मसीह आदित्य मिलिंद कोलटकर आकाश त्रिवेदी दीपांकर मेहती निखिल पणीराज फर्नांडिस जोहान मिल्टन रिमेंबर ऑल ऑफ दीज आर डिस्टिंक्शन कैंडिडेट्स शिवम सचिन चिटनेस श्रुति रविंद्र भरद्वाज अद्वैत आशीर्वाद थट्टे अरिजीत पॉल प्रत्युष अमर समरेंद्र पाणी नागानंद के के श्रद्धा सुनील पाठक मधुभूषी मधुभूषी अभिनवा जगन सताविशा डे गुगल श्रीजा गजानन प्रणव एसार रिमाइंडर दैट दीज आर ऑल डिस्टिंक्शन कैंडिडेट्स स्वागता चौधरी वैभव छाया क्रिसिल ओज गौतम जगदीश हेगड़े बीहान चैटर्जी प्रभव जैन अभिषेक कोपर्डे देवेश मौर्य पाटिल ऋषिकेश अनिल विष्णुप्रिया एस so vishnu priya is the last of the distinction candidates i now move on to the bsms uh, students of the batch uh, simant mishra in absentia gurmeen himanshu a bisikar सनक मुखर्जी
राहुल वर्मा आई थिंक मीनू मीना इन एब्सेंशिया कुंभर वैभव उमाकांत इन एब्सेंशिया मिथिल कोटक गुप्ते वृता सुनील वील टेक अ शॉर्ट वन मिनिट pause over here i request uh, director to give uh, rohan maniar's uh, certificate to him on the first row continue with a piria reshma reji tirumala venkata chakradhar in absentia sahana n राहुल कुमार शशांक प्रीतम प्रणीति सिंह सिमंतिनी पॉल अमित यादव इन एब्सेंशिया संतोष एम अश्वत्थ नारायणन मधुसूदन योगेशराज नमसियन नंबीसन जी देवानंदन के मलाविका बिजू अमलन नंदा अहमद सुहेल उडनगत अर्षट्टी रम्या के आर इन एब्सेंशिया लोकम रुथ के आर आदित्य खन्ना विराज डैनियल डिसूजा अभिषेक कुमार गुप्ता सुप्रतिम दास प्रशांत कुमार गोपीडी हर्षन रेड्डी इन एब्सेंशिया देश पांडे श्रीजित गणेश इन एब्सेंशिया भडानी अनुराग नितिन राव लक्ष्मी श्रीराम ऐश्वर्य अजीत बी शौभद्र मैती राहुल टक
Shweta K. Singh, Albert, Albert Jacob, Vanjari Rishabh Umesh, Guneet Singh Tarang, I'm running early. Okay, Guneet Singh Tarang. Tarun Yadav. Gauri Niranjana. Ananya Dodamani. Tathagata Bhattacharya. Akash R. Anaga Ajay Bhangali. Prerna Bos, Nandini Aar, Aniket Ashok Zodaje, S. Pavithira, Rosemary Roshan, Megha Dinesh Bhatt, Minakshi Pivi, Vimal Das ES, B. Niranjan, Rohit Sastra Budde, Mayank Pathak, Shefali Dharmakriti Sonarkar, Rashmita N. Sean David. Thangjam Kelvin. Bibhut Chandan Sahu. Kirtana M. Bodhayan Biswas. Shri Kuttan Ellis. Gaikwad Vibhor Vijay. Nishant Barwa, Vivek Kumar, Kardile Vaishnavi Vithal, Sayantan Datta, Ankur Prakash, Zade Ashna Anil,
वर्षा जयसिम्हा गुजरे अदिति अशोक सत्यम सौरभ कबड्डी रिजुता नयन के साई विघ्नेशन एब्सेंश अनिल कुमार जोशी अमय अभय शेख परवेज मंडल हितेश कुमार चिराग गुप्ता श्रीवास्तवा प्राची धनेन्द्र शुभांकर गजानन लोंडे अजय मोहम्मद जिबिन पी स्वर्णावो बसु केलकर विद्याधीश जगदीश इन एब्सेंशिया बदश्री जी आर जीवन इन एब्सेंशिया उम्बरकर प्राजक्ता केशव महाजन उत्कर्ष अनिल रहमतुल्ला एम पी अमृत्य हर्ष सिंह इन एब्सेंशिया लीसस कुमार सेवटकर अटे कौस्तव विलास राव अविनाश वर्मा क्षितिज वी बंसल प्रणय नरेडी आदित्य सिंह बगरी सौरजीत साहू आशुतोष राणा श्रीनील सराफ युवराज चौधरी सोमेश कुरहट्टी समुद्र प्रसन्न गिरीश इन एब्सेंशिया अचिंत मित्र परमार ध्रुवांशु महेश भाई सुगत कोकिलू मयूर राज सिंह ऋषभ देव पाटिल हर्षल राजेंद्र मोहित चटवणी रक्षित राजपूत कौस्तुभ मिश्रा
गोविंद गांधी एम किंजल मोंडल शिवांगी पटेल जामुनकर अभिषेक रविंद्र मनीष कुमार गुप्ता धीरज तेम्भुर्ने निकिता गुप्ता मुलकलवर ईश्वरी महेंद्र सायन देवनाथ एंड थ्री बी एस एग्जिट इन स्टूडेंट्स इन एबसेंशिया कुंजल कुमार पटेल कृष्णकांत मर्क सोले एंड पालथी साईराम नाउ मूव टू दी एलुमना लिस्ट एंड बिफोर दैट मनवा दिवेकर जोशी a phd student okay so now the rest of the alumni abhishek chaudhary gudapati hrithik ज्योतिष एस धवड़े मयूर शशिकांत साग्निक घोष श्रिया श्रीकांत हिरवे P. Balakrishna, Utpal Singh, Adar Srinivasan, Jatin Suresh Patil, Dinesh P.R. Gopika M. Deva Darshini S. Snigna Samantrai. Harshwardhan B.V. Ishan Jaiswal, Appu S, Akash Gupta, Chitwan Chandurya, Durgesh Raman Ajgaokar, Muskan Shinde, Subhashree Subhadarshini, Moirangatham Bikki Singh, Akash Chavan, Thank you. 
अंकुर राजेंद्र पंचन आगम पराग शाह वेदांत प्रसन्न कुमार संकल्प चौधरी दीपशिका सेन देवी प्रसाद पांडा श्याम कृष्ण पी I request the chair, Board of Governors, to sign on the graduation register. Students from ISA from the very beginning. So I'll repeat myself. The register contains the name of all graduating students from the first student who graduated from ISER. And I'll call it a hard copy of all, all graduating students from ISER, which is what the BOG chairman has signed. Now we commence the awards of the best thesis prizes, uh, both for MS thesis and PhD thesis from all disciplines. So I request Professor Girish Rattambaki to announce the award. So uh, I am going to request uh, the chairs of uh, departments to uh, uh, come on stage uh, in alphabetical order. I request first uh, Chairperson Biology, uh, Professor Tom, uh, Thomas Bukadil to come on stage and uh, read out the words. So it's, a, it's an absolute delight to announce uh, Vaibhav Chaya has uh, uh, been awarded the best uh, MS thesis in biology this year. So Vaibhav's uh, thesis is titled Form and Function. in the bills of cavity ex excavating barbets. And uh, Weber has completed his MS thesis uh, with uh, Dr. Anand Krishnan, who I believe is here in the audience with us. I'm also happy to mention that uh, Weber will be uh, continuing a program in, uh, be joining the PhD program in biology at the University of Washington in Seattle. Good luck. Guys. I request, I request uh, the chairperson chemistry, Professor Gopi, to announce the awards for chemistry. I'm very happy to announce the best thesis award in chemistry that goes to Pratim Sinharai Chaudhary. Uh, this award will be given to him in, in absentia. Pratim uh, Sinharai Chaudhary carried out his MS thesis on the studies towards the synthesis of anti-cancer agents, IAM, 
under the guidance of Dr. Bhupati Gnana Prakasam at ISER Pune. His work focused on developing a facile synthetic route for IIM290, which recently entered phase three clinical trials to treat pancreatic cancer. Prithim Sinarai wishes to pursue his PhD degree uh, in synthetic organic chemistry with an emphasis on natural product total synthesis. Girish, I think you have to read the names of the other thesis awardees. Oh, uh, I request, uh, this, this is chemistry or do I move on to physics? You have done biology and chemistry. Okay, I have thought the chair, can you read it out if you have the information? I apologize to everybody. So we have best thesis awards in uh, physics, mathematics, earth and climate science and interdisciplinary studies. So we just need to call each of the chairs. Uh, so, uh, after chair chemistry, I'll call uh, Professor Bapat uh, from the physics department. It's my pleasure to announce the awards in physics. I'll begin with the best PhD thesis award, which goes to Ajit Vijay. Ajit's uh, thesis title is Translational Diffusion of a Tracer Molecule in Nano-Confined Water. Ajit is a BSMS alumnus of uh, Alser Pune. He got his degrees in 2015 and continued to work with Dr. Shiv Prasad Patil on, uh, for his PhD. He has developed a state-of-the-art instrument and analysis technique for measuring the diffusion of a tracer molecule in water confined between walls separated by a few nanometers. Ajit will now be moving on as a postdoctoral fellow in the research group of Professor Mark Risen at the University of Texas, Austin, uh, very soon, in a couple of months. Uh, all the best, Ajit, for your next endeavor, and hearty congratulations from all of us. Let me now go over to the best MS thesis uh, award which goes to Rishikesh Anil Patil. From the applause Rishikesh has received, he's clearly a very popular student. Uh, Rishikesh has worked on uh, theoretical physics, uh, specifically on exact calculations of non-local non quantities in a loop model. His work was done under the guidance of Professor Kedar Damle of TIFR Mumbai and Dr. Srijit in Iser Pune. Rishikesh wishes to pursue a PhD in physics with an emphasis on theoretical condensed matter physics, and he will soon be joining the University of California, Santa Barbara. <laughs> Rishikesh, all the best for your endeavors, and congratulations once again. Thank you. Uh, I apologize for the mix-up in sequence. I request uh, uh, Dr. Gyana Tripathi from the Earth and Climate Science Department to uh, announce the award winners for the ECS department. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to announce the best thesis award for Earth and Climate Science Department. Uh, this year, the best thesis goes to Iswari Mulkalwar. She pursued a PhD uh, master's project with uh, Suha Sitamu on the topic of uh, amplitude modulation of the quasi-biennial oscillation by the connect connectivity coupled equatorial waves. Uh, the study highlights the seasonal and geographical preference shown by equatorial waves as a crucial factor in isolating their signals. She wishes to pursue a PhD, and I wish her success for joining a PhD degree at Scripps Institute of Oceanography at San Diego. Thank you. We next move on to the mathematics department. I request uh, Dr. Shoman Maithi to come on stage and present the award for the mathematics department. Uh, 
good evening. Uh, in mathematics, best uh, PhD thesis award goes to Prashun Rai Chaudhuri. <laughs> Prashun joins mathematics department uh, in 2017, and then he worked uh, in the area of uh, real analysis uh, with uh, Dr. Anup Bishwas and Dev Dev Ganguly. He made significant contribution to the study of uh, Poincare Hardy types inequalities and eigenvalue problems for second order elliptic PDEs. Uh, he will be joining National Taiwan University as a postdoc fellow. Congratulations, Prasunga. So, next uh, in mathematics, the best uh, MS thesis award uh, goes to Yasi Jain. Uh, yeah, so, so, so. She worked in the area of uh, number theory and the representation theory with uh, Professor Steven Spallon. Uh, her thesis, in her thesis, uh, she estimated how many irreducibles are primes in the case of rings of integers in a number field. And uh, she will be joining Johns Hopkins University for her PhD. Thank you. Next up, uh, for the Earth and Climate Science, uh, sorry, for the Humanities and Social Sciences Department, I request uh, the Chair, Dr. Pushka Soni, to, uh, to announce the awards. Good evening. It's my pleasure to announce the best MS thesis award for Humanities and Social Sciences, which has been uh, uh, you know, awarded to Viraj Daniel D'Souza. Viraj carried out his MS thesis on the linkages between sustainable development and environmental justice under the supervision of Dr. Shalini Sharma. This qualitative research used in-depth interviews, media discourse analysis, and secondary research to document and examine Pune and Sabarmati riverfront development projects. The title of the thesis was, Can Environmental Justice Guide Sustainable Development? the case of Pune and Sabarmati riverfront development projects. And the study indicates the need to explore empirically the nexus between environmental justice and sustainable development, which both have conceptual linkages and symbiotic goals, but you know, remain elusive in practice. And Viraj plans to pursue a PhD in the social sciences, so we wish him the best for that. For interdisciplinary sciences, uh, I would like to announce uh, the winner as uh, Rohit Sahasrabuddhe. So Rohit worked on social ecological systems with Dr. Shai Pilosov in the Ben Gurion University of the Negev, Israel, and P Professor Martin Roswal in the Umia University, Sweden. Using an agent-based model for social processes, his project explores the dynamics of harvesting a stylized renewable resource. The study highlights the inter intertwined nature of social and environmental processes. Understanding these interactions is vital to making informed and responsible decisions around the challenges that face us in the Anthropocene. Rohit will be continuing to study uh, complex systems and hopes to work on tackling problems of societal importance during his DPhil in the University of Oxford. Um, now, Professor Girish Ratnaparki, Dean Academics, will present the candidate for the Institute Gold Medal from the BSMS program. Uh, it is my honor to uh, present the Institute, uh, ask uh, the Chief Guest and Director to present the Institute Gold Medal to the student who tops the batch by obtaining the highest cumulative grade point average. I request the Chief Guest to hand over the medal to Adit Milind Kolatkar. So, Aditya has a, a CGP of 9.9 .9 in a scale of 10. He has scored 12 O grades. 43 A grades. His total credits are 217. He is specializing in physics. Aditya graduates with the Institute's gold medal. Aditya has majored in physics with a special emphasis 
on statistical and condensed matter physics. In his third year, he was awarded the prestigious Dad Y scholarship to pursue a summer internship at the University of Stuttgart in Germany. For his MS thesis, he worked with Dr. Srijit Jeji at ISA to set up density matrix renormalization group calculations for the quantum Hall effect with the aim of elucidating the physics of quantum Hall interfaces. Next, uh, for his future, Aditya wishes to pursue a PhD in physics and will join Cornell University in this fall. Congratulations. I now request the director, Aisa Pune, Professor Jain Tudgankar, to present the report of the institute and to introduce the chief guest. Professor Balram, Mr. Mehta, the chairman of our Board of Governors, Girish and the Register Colonel Shaker, and of course students, their teachers, including members of the Senate sitting in front of me, and parents of the students. Uh, this is a day of celebration for our graduating students. During the five years here, they have contributed much to strengthen the intellectual atmosphere at the Institute, and we thank them for that. They entered Pune, Aisa Pune, as teenagers, and they leave the Institute as responsible young adults, ready to make their, world, they make their mark on the world. I am sure that the education at ISA has prepared them well not only to tackle the important problems in science, but also to address the many problems facing us as a society. I know they will do well, and I wish them happiness in their lives. It's my pleasure now to present the annual report of the Institute for the period April 2021 to March 2022. The Institute is holding a convention, a convocation after three years. The 2020 and 2021 convocations could not be held because of the pandemic. Instead, we held online valedictory functions honoring the graduating students. Fortunately, 2022 has been a better year, and with all students back on the, at the Institute, vibrancy and all sorts of activities have returned to the campus. It is only through the hard work put in by the Institute COVID-19 Task Force that there is now a more normal life on campus. Hopefully, the Institute will be back to complete normalcy very soon. The year 2021 to 22 was an important year in the genesis of the Institute. The new Department of Data Science got off the ground with faculty members joining it. It will surely grow well. The Department of Science Education has also been established and it is expected that it too will grow well once the institute is once again allowed to hire new faculty members. These new academic activities, along with a greater appreciation of the importance of the humanities and social sciences at the institute, will ensure that students at ISA Pune receive a well-rounded education that prepares them well for their future life once they leave the institute. The institute now has 136 faculty members in eight departments. There are, there are 1136 BSMS students, 189 integrated PhD students, and 434 PhD students. Today, a total of 197 students uh, have received their degrees. The Institute is proud of its students and congratulates the graduating students, confident that they will do well in their life ahead. An Institute grows well when its new faculty members do well. They bring in new ideas, new enthusiasm, and new energy. The Institute welcomed seven new faculty members to its teaching and research programs during the last year. They include Professor Amit Apte in data science, Professor Rajesh Gokhale in biology, Dr. Lila Vati Narlika in data science, Dr. Kalika Prasad in biology, Dr. Ashish Arora in physics, Dr. Arka Banerjee in physics, and Dr. Sushmita Dikari in physics. Research at the Institute continues to flourish. Faculty members and students published 573 papers during the 2021 academic year. 13 patent applicants were filed, eight published, and five patents granted to faculty members during the same period of time. Over the past year, faculty members secured extramural funding for 51 new projects. Amongst these were three new DBT Welcome Trust India Alliance grants, and grants under two new schemes, the Supra scheme of the Science 
and Engineering Research Board, and a team science scheme of the DBT Wellcome Trust India Alliance. The chemistry department received its second FISC grant. The interdisciplinary Center for Water Research, established in 2020, had many activities throughout the year, including consultations with key stakeholders, talks, and meetings. The institute now hosts two Section 8 companies dedicated to promoting innovation on campus. The technology business incubator, AIC Seed, is supported by the Atal Innovation Mission, Niti Aayog of the Government of India, and was inaugurated in, in April 2021. The IHAP Quantum Technology Foundation was set up with the Department of Science and Technology. I'm sure that in the coming years, these two companies will play a proactive role in making the ISO community think seriously about translating their research and ideas into products useful for society. In the 2021 India rankings of the National Institutional Ranking Framework, NIRF, which considers all universities and national institutes in India, ISA Pune was ranked at the 24th position in the overall category and at the 16th position in the research category. The, the research accomplishments of faculty members have been recognized by various prestigious awards. Professor Deepak Dhar was selected to receive the prestigious Boltzmann Medal for 2022. Maybe he should stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Professor Srinivas Hota and Professor Ramnathan Vaidanathan were named fellows of the Royal Society of Chemistry. Professor Ramnathan Vaidanathan was appointed as an associated editor of the journal Chemistry of Materials. Professor Suthir Day and Professor Bhumi Shankar received the Serb Star Award for 2021. Dr. Shabanti Chaudhary and Dr. Bhumi Shankar received the bronze medals of the Chemical Research Society of India for 2022. Dr. Nishad Matange was selected for the 2021 eLife Ben Bar Barris Spotlight Award. Dr. Mausumi Bhakta and Dr. Siddesh Kamat were selected for the Swarni Jayanti Fellowships for 2020-25. Dr. Raghav Rajan was selected for the Senior Fellowship awarded by the DBT Welcome Trust India Alliance. <laughs> Professor Sham Rai re received a Raja Ramana Fellowship. Dr. Sudeep Sharka was elected as a Fellow of the Geological Society of London. Dr. Sagar Pandit was elected as a Life Fellow of the Lo Royal Entomological Society. Professor Satish Chandra Ogle received the CNR Rao Prize Lecture Award in Advanced Materials for the year 2021 from the Materials Research Society of India. And Professor Rajesh Gokhale was appointed as the Secretary of the Department of Biotechnology. After successfully running a COVID-19 testing center with the help of volunteers from among students, staff, and faculty members during 2020, the Institute ran a COVID-19 vaccination center during 2021, where a total of 4,400 individuals received their vaccines. The doctors and nurses of the campus wellness clinic, as well as the counselors, played an important role, often going beyond the call of duty in keeping the campus safe and healthy. Another major contribution towards tackling COVID-19 came from genome sequencing efforts at the Institute. Aisa Pune became a member of the Indian SARS-CoV-2 Consortium on Genomics, a consortium of national laboratories established by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and by the Department of Biotechnology. The Institute is also part of a consortium led by CSIR CCMB Hyderabad for SARS-CoV-2 genome sequencing and environmental surveillance across four major Indian cities, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Pune, and Delhi. ISA Pune, the Pune Knowledge Cluster, and NCL Pune represent Pune City in the consortium. The bulk of the clinical samples and all the environmental surveillance samples from Pune City are sequenced at ISA Pune. The SARS-CoV-2 genome sequencing effort at the Institute is currently supported by the Rockefeller Foundation, the Vilu Puna Punawala Foundation, and the Janki Devi Bajaj Gram Vikas Sanstha. Faculty members Krishnapal Kamodia, Ornab Ghosh, and Joy Mervyn Montero are coordinating this initiative. 
Several of the Institute's students received accolades for their performance in academics and innovation. Curem Biotech, the first student-led startup at ISA Pune, was incubated at the Atal Incubation Center on the campus. The team won Birax Biotechnology Ignition Grant and the IGEM Startup Showcase. A team of students from ISA Pune won a gold medal at the 2021 IGEM Synthetic Biology Competition. <laughs> BSMS student Chirag Gupta was among the toppers of CAT 2021. ISA students had to spend a good part of the year attending classes online from home, and this meant limited opportunity to pursue extracurricular activities. Nevertheless, they made the most of the difficult situation and adapted some extracurricular activities to the online mode. The students participated in the Inter-ISA Virtual Games and Sports Fest, the Tenacity, conducted by ISA Kolkata, conducted the Mimamsa Annual Science Quiz online, and took part in the cultural events conducted by Aisa Pune and Behrampur as part of the Ek Bharat Shreshta Bharat program. Pratha, the Green Club, organized events on the campus such as counting of bird species and recording biodiversity on the campus. Returning to campus earlier this year allowed students to participate in the Aisa Premier League cr cricket tournament. During 2021-22, Institute received financial commitments of rupees 3.4 crores from 19 companies and individuals to support various activities. Funds were raised towards research and outreach activities and for providing financial assistance to the students. A total of 88 students received support for paying semester fees as well as for subsistence. The ISA Pune Ideals Limited tuition fee waiver to meritorious students was extended to 10 students and one PhD student will be receiving a prestigious industry-supported PhD fellowship. And under the Infosys Foundation Endowment Fund, tuition fee waivers were extended to 48 BSMS students and four integrated PhD students, whereas travel grants were awarded to 12 PhD and integrated PhD students. The ISA Pune Ideas Scholarships for 21, 2021 to 22 were received by 21 meritorious students. CSR contributions made possible research grants to 27 senior PhD and integrated PhD students and 50 year BSMS students and supported 50 PhD scholars on the extended PhD tenure. The Institute mourned the sad demise of Sri Rahul Bajaj, a longtime benefactor of Aisa Pune, in February this year. Through the endowment instituted by him in 2021, three faculty members, Dr. Mosumi Bhakta, Professor Pinaki Talukdar, and Professor Thomas Pukadil were recognized for their academic achievements through chair, professorship, chair professorships named after Sri Rahul Bajaj. The Institute engaged with 22 organizations from industry and academia in India and elsewhere towards building research partnerships. Considering the strong research collaborations in the area of chemistry and also the dual master's and doctoral program the MOU for academic and research collaboration between ISA Pune and Temple University in the US was renewed for the next five years. The Institute signed the MOU with Durham University as the first milestone in developing a collaboration for a virtual center for teaching excellence and pedagogy, along with international partners. Uh, MOU with the Institute de Physique du Globe de Paris, France was renewed for four years towards a dual master's degree program in the earth sciences. A joint workshop series has been initiated with the School of Education, University of Glasgow. Based on the results of these workshops, a course for training teachers will be co-developed by the University of Glasgow School of Education and ISA Pune. During the pandemic, the Science Activity Center started a Sunday lecture, live lecture and demonstration series. The total number of views surpassed 2.2 lakhs in the last year. The center also organized Wednesday live demonstration sessions, Toy Cathan, Children's Day and Science Day celebrations, all of which allowed the institute to reach out to the wider student and teacher community. The iRISE project hosted at the institute is reaching out to the teacher and researcher community via capacity building training activities. 
In June 2021, a major fire damaged some of the laboratories in the chemistry wing, resulting in the loss of reagents and equipment and disrupting the work of several research students. The restoration work of these laboratories was started immediately after the fire uh, by the Institute Engineering Section, and the majority of this work has been completed. The Institute has been benefited tremendously from the smooth functioning of its statutory committees, the Senate, the Building and Works Committee, the Finance Committee, and the Board of Governors. The advice and gov guidance of all members of the Board of Governors has, have been invaluable, especially that of its chairperson, Sri Sudhir Mehta, who is presiding over the convocation today. Again, it is my privilege to congratulate all students graduating today. Congratulations, I wish you all the best, do well in life. Thank you. I now request uh, the director to introduce the chief. It's really a privilege to introduce Professor Balram. Uh, Professor Balram studied in Pune initially. Uh, he did his BSc from Ferguson College uh, from Pune, Pune University, his MSc from IIT Kanpur, and his PhD from Carnegie Mellon University. He was then at Howard University for a year before joining the faculty of the Indian Institute of Science, uh, where he was from 1973 to 2014 as a faculty member. He was director of the IIC from 2005 to 2014 and has done extensive work and contributed much to the areas of molecular biophysics and chemical biology. Professor Belram is known to virtually every scientist in the country because of the very incisive editorials he's written for the journal Current Science for something like eight years from 1995 to 2013. I believe he's authored over 300 editorials in which he has really discussed and analyzed the state of Indian science over all those years. Uh, he's a recipient of many awards and honors, uh, including the Padma Shri and the Padma Bhushan. Uh, most recently, he, re he received the Bruce Merrifield Award of 2021 from the M American Peptide Society. He's He's currently associated with the National Center for Biological Sciences in Bangalore as a DST YOS chair professor. So that's the formal part of the introduction, but I've known Professor Balram since 1987, I believe. Uh, this was before I joined the national, before I came back to India from the US. And I visited the Indian Institute of Science at that time in 1987 and Professor Balram spared a whole day to show me around the campus. And uh, he took me around on his scooter and I nearly killed him by not knowing how to sit properly on a two-wheeler. Uh, even though my weight at that time was 10 kilograms less, his was even lesser. And the mass distribution on the scooter was such that it was tilting in front of a bus. But. Uh, Anyway, it's been a real pleasure to have known him since that time. Uh, I got to know him even more when I moved to Bangalore and our uh, center was for the first five, six years on the Indian Institute of Science campus. Um, we used to get invited to the same meetings very often. Uh, at least all the meetings I was invited to, he would be speaking also. And invariably, he was the star speaker, and I would be speaking after him. And those of you who have heard Professor Balram speak know that it's very difficult to match him in style and follow him in any lecture which he gives. And all of you will, be, will really get to know that uh, when he delivers his lecture. It's been a pleasure knowing him all these years. He's been a source of very good advice uh, to the institute I was at and also to me personally, and it's with great pleasure that I invite him to give his talk out here. Uh, 
Good evening. Uh, Sri Sudhir Mehta, Chairperson, Board of Governors, the Director, Professor Jayant Udgonka, guests, faculty, students, and most importantly, the graduating batch of students who are present. It's a privilege for me to be with you at this ninth convocation of ISA Pune. First of all, I must begin by congratulating each and every one of you and offering my best wishes to all the students who are graduating today, and of course to their families for whom this is the most important day. In coming to this convocation, I asked myself, what should I talk to you about? Your minds are dominated today by two conflicting emotions, the prospects of leaving an institution where you have spent some of the most enjoyable years of your life. You will realize that they were the most important, enjoyable years of your life very much later in your life. And the excitement of anticipating a new chapter that is about to begin. I had the opportunity of having a ringside view of the processes that led to the establishment of the ISAs in 2006. Their establishment was driven by the recognition that it was important to embed undergraduate science education in an ambience where research was very much a part of the environment. After all, it is the scientific advances of the last two centuries that have driven the modern technological revolution. I'm also aware that the last two years have seen an upsurge in the public awareness of science. This has been driven by the coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, terms like RT-PCR, rapid antigen tests, aerosol transmission, mRNA vaccines, and even mathematical modeling are terms that are commonly used in discussions between those unaware of the language of science. 55 years ago, and I thought about this when I was coming, when I graduated in this very city from the Ferguson College and went out into the world with a bachelor's degree, it was indeed a very different world. 36 years ago, when I reached the high point of any academic career, that is admission to the professorial rank, the world around me was still largely as it was in the 1960s. But in this interregnum, unknown to me, major revolutions were underway in science and technology. These upheavals spanned a range of disciplines, genome sequencing and genetic engineering in biology, the explosion of computer technologies, and the communications revolution. The internet, Google, and the cell phone forever transformed the way we live. These technological advances rested on fundamental breakthroughs in physics, in chemistry, in biology, in material science, in mathematics, and computer science, often the results of decades of painstaking research. Rarely were they the result of that blinding flash of insight that makes science often look glamorous and romantic from the outside. I want you to think of gene sequencing technologies. Reflect on the lithium battery so central to our lives today, or the electronic processes that, pro processes that drive all our devices. And many more, you will realize that science and technology are inseparable. Even the seeds of Google's page rank algorithm can be found in the scientific literature of the 1950s, when Eugene Garfield laid the foundations of the web of science, ushering in the age of scientometrics. With his very famous paper, Citation Indexes for Science, a new dimension in documentation through association of ideas. If you go back and look at these, you will find that the seeds of many revolutions in science have been sowed many decades earlier. The long investments in basic research are sometimes best done with public funds. You are, of course, a publicly funded institution. It is therefore important that governments across the world take the long view of science, an approach that is indeed difficult in times of floundering economies. Captains of industry, driven by the imperatives of corporate progress, will generally be cautious in investing in basic research. 
even private philanthropists in India would be disinclined to support an activity whose benefits are not immediately apparent. As graduates in science, you might be asked a question, and you might be asked this question even by your families. What is science? Sometimes you might, as I have done, ask yourself the question and seek an answer. You might answer that science is the study of nature. That leads to another question. What is nature? The best answer that I found was in the editorial in the very first volume of the journal Nature that appeared in 1869. The famous biologist Thomas Huxley was asked to write this editorial, heralding the appearance of a new science journal. Huxley did not write the editorial. Instead, what he did was he translated from the German an essay written in the mid-18th century by the poet von Goethe. And I quote, in the poet's words, nature, we are surrounded and embraced by her, powerless to penetrate beyond her and powerless to separate ourselves from her. It is therefore not surprising that the two most influential journals in science are named nature and science. Think of the subjects that you've studied. Physics and biology are with you all the time. You know, if you move, you think about physics. If you see anything around you, it's biological. Although sometimes you may not choose to recognize this fact. Nothing in the world around you, including yourself, is divorced from chemistry. Indeed, some years ago, in response to an intriguing judgment of the Bombay High Court that steam is not a chemical, the Royal Society of Chemistry offered an award of one million pounds to anyone producing a material that is non-chemical. Today, the only people who sort of advertise non-chemical chemicals are Patanjali and some uh, <laughs> companies like this. The one million pound offer of the Royal Society of Chemistry is still available. And I'm sure that some of you need the money and therefore you should look for this non-chemical material. Of mathematics, I can do no better than remind you that Galileo once remarked that mathematics is the language in which God wrote the universe. If I paraphrase Galileo, and I'm a chemist, I might add that chemistry is the language in which nature wrote the book of life. The biochemist Arthur Kornberg aptly described chemistry as the lingua franca of the medical and biological sciences. It is one of the sad facts of medical education in India that so little attention is paid to the study of chemistry. Now, science also requires tools and we sometimes underestimate the importance of technology in driving science. The famous theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson once noted that science is often driven by new technologies rather than new concepts. This is sometimes difficult for those, of, for those scientists who are in science for this blinding fast of insight to believe this, but it is true in many, many disciplines. I hesitate to say this, of course, with Professor Deepak Dhar in the audience, and thinking of Boltzmann, one might sometimes think that pure thought leads to remarkable insights. In the 17th century, two inventions, the telescope and the microscope, forever altered our view of the world. When Galileo pointed the telescope skywards, he opened the field of cosmology, which was then still restricted by human vision. When Leeuwenhoek examined water under his microscope, he discovered living organisms, too small to be seen with the naked eye. He had uncovered the vast science of microbiology, and this is a field which has really impacted the public consciousness during the years of the pandemic. Tools are also discovered sometimes when fundamental research allows scientists to make observations that lead to far-reaching conclusions and applications. 
The classical example is Pasteur's resolution of tartaric acid in the mid 19th century. This opened the field of stereochemistry with its very wide ranging impact on uh, biochemistry and also the interactions of light with matter. Fleming's serendipitous discovery of penicillin is another oft cited example which ushered in the age of antibiotics. But in the 20th century, separated by a span of seven decades, two discoveries revolutionized medicines, making diagnostic radiology indispensable for clinical practice. Both came from physics. The first was Ronchin's discovery of x-rays at the dawn of the century. In fact, when Ronchin first discovered x-rays, the only people who liked x-rays were medical practitioners, because Ronchin had called his wife in and asked her to put her hand in front of the x-ray beam, and he saw the skeletal impression of the hand. Ronchin's wife wasn't very happy. She said, I've seen death. But the medical practitioners immediately realized you could now visualize broken bones when you saw them. The second advance was much later, Lotterbeer's imaging of two tubes of water in the 1970s using nuclear magnetic resonance in inhomogeneous magnetic fields. This was the birth of magnetic resonance imaging. You know, the word, the prefix nuclear was cleverly dropped so that it doesn't alarm the public. Magnetic resonance sounds somewhat neutral. Can there be better examples than x-rays and MRIs when you enter a hospital, you see them everywhere? Can there be better examples to argue the case for basic science? Raman's effect, for example, today is used in ways which Raman would have never anticipated in the late 1920s when he discovered this new phenomenon of light scattering. But amongst those of us who marvel at the wonders of nature, always ask the question, where did everything we see come from? This leads to questions which cannot always be answered. Questions on the origins of the universe, questions on the origins of life on Earth. All the natural elements in Mendeleev's periodic table were the Earth's inheritance when it was born. Nucleosynthesis is the prerogative of the stars, and our sun is amongst them. In his magisterial survey of the ascent of man, this is the title of a BBC series which appeared in the 1970s, narrated by Jacob Bronowski, later produced as a book. Bronowski describes the formation of carbon, so essential for life, and I quote, in all the stars that are going on processes, which build up the atoms one by one into more complex structures, Matter itself evolves. The word comes from Darwin and biology, but it is the word that changed physics in my lifetime. You must understand the word evolve. Even cultural evolution is something that we need to understand today. Cultures evolve too. Bronowski goes on to reflect on the formation of carbon so essential for life. He says, the formation of carbon atoms happen when three helium nuclei collide for one millionth of a millionth of a second, 10 to the minus 12 of a second. And then he says, every carbon atom in every living creature that is all of us is the result of such a wildly improbable collision. What does it mean? Life and biology are indeed improbable. A chance event in our solar system's evolutionary history. After centuries of science, can one list its most important achievements? As freshly minted graduates and faculty tempered by experience, you might well try. But here I must quote the always eminently quotable physicist, Richard Feynman. In his introductory lecture, in his now immortal course on undergraduate physics at Caltech, he asks, and he asks a question, I'll read the question. If in some cataclysm, all of scientific knowledge were to be destroyed, and only one sentence passed on to the next generation of creatures, what statement would contain the most information in the fewest words? He answers his question in his class. He says, I believe it is the atomic hypothesis, or the atomic fact, or whatever 
else you wish to call it, that all things are made up of atoms, little particles that move around in perpetual motion, attracting each other when they're a little distance apart, but repelling upon being squeezed into one another. Boltzmann, of course, had anticipated atoms in the 19th century when he thought of heat. Ironically, the cataclysm that must have occupied Feynman's thoughts in the 1950s and 60s would have been the threat of nuclear war. That was what everybody used to think about in the 1950s and 60s. Sadly, that prospect appears to have once again emerged. In the world of geopolitics, there is little time to wonder about the fragile thread by which life on Earth hangs and the importance of preserving the natural world, which of course includes human species, as unsustainable consumption and development threaten the natural order. In the year 1999-2000, the new century was being born. It was also the new millennium, and everyone was excited. Actually, nothing changes, but everyone was still excited. The journal Nature commissioned a series of essays where established commentators put forth their views on what was the most important scientific advance of the 20th century. If you were asked to name this today, all of you will have different ideas. You might think about this based on the subjects that you have studied or heard at ISA. One essay that I read then has stayed in my mind. This was written by the Canadian environmental scientist, Václav Schmil. He argued that the most important scientific advance of the 20th century was the Harbour Bosch industrial synthesis of ammonia. All of you would have studied this and undoubtedly disregarded this, the harbour process for converting gaseous nitrogen and hydrogen at high temperature and high pressure in the presence of a catalyst to yield ammonia. I remember studying this uh, as an undergraduate. You probably studied it in 12th class now. And everyone learns to hate the Harbour Bosch process because it might actually appear in the examination. But you might ask, why is this the most important scientific advance of the 20th century? It is because it drove the synthesis of urea, the chemical synthesis of urea. And because of this, this was the first fertilizer, and it drove the first agricultural revolution of the 20th century. Millions of lives otherwise lost to famine were saved. Agriculture was transformed by chemistry in the first half of the 20th century. Famines persisted. The last famine in India happened in the mid-1960s when I was here in Ferguson College, and in those days, in the hostels, we would not get rice and we would not get wheat, but we would instead get khichdi made of sabutha. It was a time when the Prime Minister of India actually went on national radio to say that once a week uh, we should not have our dinner. And of course, if you were 16 years old, you didn't think that was a good idea. But nevertheless, that was food scarcity. The second agricultural revolution of the 20th century was driven by biology. That's what we call the Green Revolution today. The world that you will encounter now in future faces two threats, both imminent. The first is the specter of food scarcity. Food security measures are crumbling in many countries as a consequence of the ongoing war in Ukraine. The second is the old Cold War bogey of a nuclear exchange. These threats promise to unsettle the global order, thereby denying human populations the benefits accrued by centuries of scientific advance. I don't know whether many of you have read this book. If you haven't, you must read it. This is the book Sapiens, written by the Israeli historian Yuval Harari. He traces the evolution of humankind. He asks an interesting question, which I paraphrase. When in the course of human evolution does human behavior begin to disregard biological imperatives that dominate animal behavior? We're all animals. 
And when does human behavior become increasingly influenced by recent history? In Harari's words, the cognitive revolution is accordingly the point when history declared its independence from biology. As long as we were hunter-gatherers, moving in small bands to gather food, we were driven by the same imperatives that animals are driven, the very animals that you st study today in wildlife biology. He goes on to say, the immense diversity of imagined realities that sapiens invented and the resultant diversity of behavior patterns are the main components of what we call cultures. Once cultures appeared, they never cease to change and develop, and these unstoppable alterations are what we call history. And then he says, from the cognitive revolution, and you might ask, what catalyzed the cognitive revolution? When did the human brain begin to develop in the manner in which it has developed today? It was again a technological advance. Bronowski traces this in The Ascent of Man. It was the invention of agriculture. It was when human societies became stationary. And when human societies became stationary, had to protect their food, protect their fields, that you needed to organize societies. And when you organize societies, the best way to organize them is to create myths which will bind societies together. What we see today are cultures which have evolved over the centuries, evolved over the 10, 20,000 years since agriculture first began to impact human existence on Earth. Harari goes on to say from the cognitive revolution onwards, historical narratives replace biological theories as our primary means of explaining the development of Homo sapiens. To understand the rise of Christianity or the French Revolution, it is not enough to comprehend the interaction of genes, hormones, and organisms. It is necessary to take into account the interactions of ideas, images, and fantasies as well. What does modern science tell us about biology? Comparative genomics tells us that human beings are a minor branch in the tree of life budding from the broader branch of eukarya. Life on Earth is dominated by the microbial branches, bacteria and archaea. Our closest neighbors, if you look at the tree of life in a biology textbook, are chimpanzees, rats, mice, mice pigs, horses, cattle, sheep, and dogs. There is a certain comforting unity in biology, yet, Human history, driven by civilizational influences and the evolution of culture, appears to be sadly divisive. Over the last two years, you have experienced nature in all its magnificence in the form of the coronavirus. While it has caused us great disruption, it is still a remarkable natural phenomenon where a disease has emerged out of nowhere and then evolved as it spread through human populations. The coronavirus has breached all political, religious, and ethnic boundaries, reminding us that politics and religion, two favorite pastimes not only in India but worldwide, afford no protection against the forces of nature. You might ask then, in an address when you're graduating, why do I draw your attention to such a disparate group of subjects? I do this because of the environment, climatic, social, and political, in which we live today. You're all from a science institution. Some reflections on the role of science in understanding nature may allow us to introspect on the course of human history an attempt to rationalize why the world is the way it is today. Science is a deeply humbling subject, and every day we are reminded of our imperfect understanding of even the subjects of our daily research. It is this humility that I hope you have learned at ISA. It will go a long way in guiding you in the future. 
usually speakers at convocations are supposed to give words of good advice to the graduating class of students. I learned long ago, never give advice to anybody. Don't give advice to government because they throw it into the waste paper basket. Uh, don't give advice to your colleagues because they'll get angry with you. And uh, don't give advice to students because they go to anyway do whatever they want to do. <laughs> so keep the advice to yourself. But then I thought, what have other people said? And I think the best convocation address that I've ever read was one given at Harvard many years ago. And the convocation speaker, or the commencement speaker as they are known, was a famous person, but not the kind of person you might expect at the Harvard commencement. It was J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter books. And what J.K. Rowling said has really remained in my mind, and I'll simply paraphrase what she said. You know, there are two qualities that will stand you in good stead in whatever you wish to do. You might like to become a poet or a painter after having studied physics here. Don't worry, do it. Uh, and those two qualities, and I borrow from Rowling here, are resilience and imagination. Certainly, Rowling did very well with both qualities. And uh, it was her resilience and her imagination which allowed her to produce the Harry Potter series. In research, and indeed in many other walks of life, failure is more common than success. Uh, in Indian educational institutions, students come in after a battery of entrance examination. They come in already bruised and battered, especially, for example, in the IITs. After all of this, everything else is an anticlimax afterwards. And you're always worried about success. But in real life, failure is far more common than success. And in research, failure is almost an everyday occurrence. Overcoming the fear of failure, and this is Rowling's advice, is often the first step towards success. She said this to the Harvard graduating class, because if you've gotten into Harvard, afterwards you're afraid of failing for the rest of your life. And that doesn't do you any good. I would. Continue to say, let your imagination take you forward and do whatever it is that you wish to do. It's been a privilege to come here and to address you, and may I wish all of you the very best in the years to come. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Balram, for your wonderful talk. You've given us a lot to think about. Uh, to take back memories of your visit to our institute, we would like to present you a memento. Uh, I request the director to hand over the memento to the chief guest. I now request the graduates to stand up for the exhortation from the Chairperson Senate. Be aware that your knowledge and intellectual attainment is your most sacred wealth. Use it in a manner befitting the honor and dignity of your nation. Follow your passions, listen to your conscience, and prove your value to science and society. Make every effort through your thought, word, and deed to uphold the dignity of your profession and integrity of your character. Take the path of right action and excel in your pursuit of truth to brighten the future of the world. Be worthy of your alma mater, revere its spirit, and make us proud of you. Thank you.
I request the Chairperson Board of Governors to declare the convocation closed. I declare the ninth annual convocation of ICER Pune closed. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I request everyone to stand up for the national anthem. And after the national anthem, all are requested to remain standing in their places till the academic procession leaves. The academic procession will now leave. All graduating students are requested to leave. I request the parents and guests to be seated until the students have left. I now request the parents and guests to leave. The parents and students are requested to head to the dining hall for dinner. 